close enough. Wind him up. Worlds apart. How many decades ago was that? Um, Farmyard Studios, Little Chow Font, England. First time working with Rupert Hine and Stephen Taylor, the engineer. Two guys that, uh, they were, it was like a psychic thing watching them work together. I remember being in the studio one day and just sitting back on the couch and, and watching the two of them sit at the board. And they were listening to something, I can't remember what it was, and they, 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 the playback finished and Rupert was just leaning, they were both leaning on the console and Rupert just kind of glanced over at Steve. They didn't say a word, they just kind of looked at each other and Steve leaned forward and adjusted something. And they played it again. Rupert just looked at him, just kind of nodded, and I said, what, I what's going on here? Uh, they just, they had worked so much together that they, they just knew, uh, each of them knew what each other was thinking, and they were hearing the same thing at the same time. But uh, uh, they were real uh, perfectionists, but uh, really thinking out of the box with certain things. I mean, a great example of that was in Wind Em Up. Um, the quiet section, when it all breaks down in the middle, uh, the vocal is supposed to be really relaxed and really quiet and it's an octave lower and they wanted a kind of smoky kind of uh, gritty kind of voice I was singing it too cleanly uh, so we tried it a few times the the night before and and we just didn't quite get it and Rupert said you know what we'll, we'll leave that for now we'll try it again tomorrow and uh, it's about eight o'clock in the morning I think 8 30 in the morning and the accommodations were the old um, I mean, it was an old uh, the, the studio itself was a, the old barn of the farm and of course you've got a great live room because of that. The accommodation were the old stables so you had to walk across the, the big parking lot area and I was dead asleep 8, 8.30 in the morning and I hear somebody walk into my room and, and I'm barely awake and I kind of open my eyes a little bit and in comes the, the, the engineer, the tape off and he's got a, a, a boom and the microphone attached and headphones and he walks over, he slips the headphones on me, sets up the mic. I, I'm just still laying there and he puts the mic right in front of my face. I got the headphones on, he closes the door and I hear either Rupert or Steve on the other end of the headphones saying, Morning Michael, you know the, you know the song, you go full while lead in, just sing along. I'm like, uh, uh. And they started the middle section of, of Wind Em Up and the part came and I just kind of went, Wind Em Up, he can. <laughs> One take, uh, the tape op came walking back in the room, took off the headphones, took the microphone away, and off he went, closed the door, and I was laying there going, what just happened? And put my house coat on, went over to the studio, and was like, good morning, and I'm like, they're full, full at it at 8, 8.15 in the morning. And I said, uh, I said, what just happened? He said, well, you remember we were trying to get that kind of effect? I said, he said, uh, listen to this. And he played it back, and I went, Oh my God, because I wasn't thinking about it. And I, they just wanted that kind of very relaxed, don't, don't even think about the melody, just kind of sing it off as if you're just thinking it. So, I mean, they were loaded with those kind of ideas. It was just uh, that kind of an album. But, uh, I remember writing this record in uh, Maidenhead, this little town that we all lived in the same house, and uh, put this whole album together. And uh, that was a lot of fun. And I think uh, the success of the album, the, the, the strength of the songwriting came from uh, the, idea, the fact that we were all working together every day, we'd get up in the morning, have breakfast and go straight at it and just, just the, the change of environment. We've done the first three albums in Toronto with Paul Gross at Phase One and I think the change of environment, the change of, of producer, um, just, just shaking things up a bit was, was a great influence in, in opening our minds to a different kind of writing. Um, consequently, it became one of our best-selling records. So. I, one of my favorites actually.